In this chapter, we're going to build a complete project for a simple chat program. To do this, we'll first need to create a user interface, and we'll need to do a little work with Java's network library. Like many things in good object-oriented systems, the network library is largely a specialization of the I.O. library. So although we've not looked at it before, it shouldn't be too hard to get to grips with. This lesson, we'll look at the first part of the problem, laying out the graphical user interface. We're going to need two components in the graphical user interface. One will be a text area that contains the conversation, and that should probably be scrollable to allow for long conversations. We'll also need a text field that is used to enter the next comment that that particular participant wants to make. This UI will be used by both participants. So let's start by building this UI. We'll create our project, and we'll call this chat client. I'm going to call the main class test it. I'm going to put it in the package chat. The reason I'm going to call it test it is that for the time being this main program is just going to be a way of testing our work in progress. It won't actually be part of the finished product. So we'll hit finish on that. So step one is going to be to create the chat window layout. We'll start by creating a new class and call that one chat UI. So new Java class chat UI. This class is going to need to create a JFrame, a JText area, that's the multi-line text device, a JText field, which is the single line one that would be used for input. And we're also probably going to want to have a scroll pane, and we'll need some private variables for these. So we'll start there. We'll create the variables. And you'll notice that uh, as soon as we do that, we get the complaints. We need some imports, so we'll arrange for the imports. Remember that we can achieve from source fix imports, or we can hit Command Shift I or Alt Shift I in a Windows platform. So there are our variables. Now the next thing is we need to think about how we might construct this. Obviously, we'll have to have a constructor, and the J frame will probably want a title bar. Now because we're planning to use this GUI for both ends of the conversation, we'll probably want to make that title bar a parameter to the constructor. So let's start creating our constructor. We'll assume that we're going to provide a title, and we'll call it title. The first thing we'll do is to create our JFrame, and we'll set the default close operation on that. Next, we'll create our chat text, which will be our JText area. So that's the multi-line display. We'll add that to our scroll pane. So in this case, we create the scroll pane and provide the chat text, the JText area, as the argument to it. And then we will add the scroll pane to the frame. We need an import for the border layout. Now notice this time we didn't actually explicitly set a border layout on the JFrame, as the comment foreshadowed. It turns out that actually the JFrame already has a border layout as its default layout manager, so we don't actually have to worry about that. Next we need to add the single line text field, which we're calling entry text, and we're going to put that into the frame at the south position. Then finally we will set the boundary of the frame I'm going to do this explicitly because an empty text area doesn't really try to take up much space. We want it to have a sensible amount of size, so we'll set the bounds to 2020 for our offset, so it'll appear up in the top left corner. We'll give it a width and height of 300, and we'll set it visible. Do you remember the rule about not interacting with GUI components except in the event thread? Well, up to the point where we set the frame as visible, there's no event thread in this case but there are some situations where that wouldn't be true. Consequently, it's actually good and standard practice to use the invoke later functionality to perform the building of our layout. So we're going to wrap this whole thing in a call to invoke later. I'm going to add this at the front of our code. So there's our swing utilities. We'll have an import for that. There's our invoke later. We're declaring the new runnable. There's the body of the run method for the runnable, and there's the emptiness. So what we'll actually do is we will copy this lot, and we'll move it inside 
that run method and we will go control shift F for format. If you ever find you can't remember that, you can right click on that pane and find format down here and then it will remind you what the shortcut key is. We'll clean up a few of these spare blank lines. And now we have the body of our construction going on in the AWT event thread. So everything is now completely safe. Unfortunately, you notice that we now have a complaint about title. If we hover over that error, it says local variable accessed from inner class needs to be declared final. That's something new. Now for reasons that we're not going to get into in this lesson, we actually have to mark this title parameter here where it's declared as final. That means that that variable can never be changed. Well, that's fine because we don't want to change it. But the important thing is it also allows us access to that field from inside our inner class. So now you can see it's happy. OK, so let's test this from the test it main file. What we'll do, we'll put in here, simple call to construct this thing and give it a title field. If we save that and I'm going to right click and do run file. There's our layout and we can type in there and actually we can also type in here, which we didn't really expect to be able to do. I don't want to be able to do that, but let's kill this for a moment. And if we take a quick look at the documentation for JTEXT area, so in the swing package JTEXT area, you'll notice that under JTEXT component, the methods inherited for that, there is a method called set editable. That sounds like that might do what we need it to do. Notice while we're at it, there are also get text methods. So we might want those later on as well, so we'll keep those in mind. If we click on set editable, we'll see that set editable takes a Boolean value and that will allow us to indicate whether this text component should be editable or not. So that will probably do what we need it to. So let's go back to our chat UI and we will find our chat text and we will set editable false on that. Chat text dot set editable false. We save that, run this again. Now we should find that we can't type in there. I'm bashing keys and nothing's happening, but we can still type in there. So that looks rather better. So there we have it. In this lesson, we've built a graphical user interface that lays out the components we'll need for our chat tool project. The next step will be to arrange for this to connect to IO channels so that we can send our messages somewhere and receive messages from somewhere else.